Good morning. We will pay attention to budgets and the debtors collection schedule. This is a very important part of budgets because according to this schedule, you can determine how much money the business will receive each month. And this must be calculated properly, otherwise they will have cash flow problems if they think that they're going to get more money than the actual amount that they will receive. Okay, so in this first one, I didn't put discount so that we can just first sort out that you know exactly how to do the calculations. So they tell you that the sales is 375, so we will write down March sales 375, April sales 360, May 354, 393 and 402. So that is our first step is to determine what is the total sales now sometimes they will tell you this is the total sales then they will tell you that 40 percent is for instance cash and the rest is on credit so you must read very carefully to determine whether they give you the credit sales or whether they give you the total sales because the uh, debtors age analysis or debtors collection schedule can only be calculated on the credit sales because that's the amount that the debtors owe you. The cash sales will be recorded in your budget as cash sales. Okay, so what I will do is they say that in the first month we will receive 50%. So it means of this total amount here 50% will be received in three in March because we sold in March. In April, it will be 30%. And in May, it will be 20%. Okay, so it means that you have to determine how they will pay. And we look at March and say from the March amount, how much will be received each month. Okay, so in March we will receive 50% of the total credit sales. So it's times the 375,000 Rand. And that will give me 187,500. So it means in March we will collect 187,500. Okay, then the next month we will receive 30%. So I will calculate 30% times the 375,000. And that will give me the total amount as 112,500 that we will collect in April. And then the last month is May. And we will receive 20% of that 375,000 and that will give me 75,000 rand that we can collect in May. Okay, if we look at the April sales, these 360,000, so they will pay in April 50% and of this amount they will receive 30% in May and they will receive 20% in June. Okay, so I have to determine how much money we will receive. So I will take the 360 times the 50% and that will give me 180,000 that we will receive in May. Then 360,000 times 30% and that will give me 108,000. And then 360 times 20%, and that will give me 72,000. So it means that I have to calculate each month how much money of this total sales in April. They're not going to pay all of it. We have to split it over the uh, number of months that the debtors have permission to pay for it. Okay, if we look at May, it means that you will start collecting in May and the first month will be 50%. The second month will be 30% and the last month 
will be 20%. So we will start collecting money in May and we will show the 345,000 times 50% and that will give me 172,500. Okay, then of this 345,000, they will receive 30% in June. So I will multiply with 30% and that will give me 103,500. And then in July, we will receive 20% of the amount and that will equal 69,000 rand. Then we go to June and the first month that we will collect money for June will be in June and we will collect 50% and the next month we will collect 30%. So in June I will show that we will collect money 50% of 393,000 and that will give me 196 500 and then the following month we will collect 30 percent and then i will work out the 30 percent times the 393,000, and that equals 117,900. okay in july we will collect 50 percent so the first time that we will collect money for sales in July will be in July and we will receive 50% of the 402,000 and that will give me 201,000. Okay, then I can add up to see what is the total amount that we will receive over the budget period. Okay, now these figures that I've calculated here is very important because these figures are the ones that you will record in your budget to indicate what will the receipts from debtors be. If you don't calculate this correctly and you use this as the receipts in their budget and it's not correct, then it can cause a lot of problems because you thought you will get 372,000 and actually it's only 272,000 so it means when you start paying things in June suddenly you don't have enough money because you didn't correct the calculations correctly to determine how much money we will receive from the debtors. So these figures are very important in the budget to ensure that you will not have cash flow problems. If I see in the budget, say for instance we don't have any other income, this is the only money where we have an income for the business and we see that our expenses in one of the budget months are more than what we will actually receive in that month, then it means that uh, you have to cut on certain expenses, reduce the expenses. You will, for instance, have to retrench staff members to decrease expenses for salaries or you have to take steps to decrease um, the use of stationery or electricity or uh, packing material, any of your expenses. Then you have to do that budget over and ensure that you don't budget for more payments than what you will actually receive. If you see, for instance, that you will have problems in June, then it means that because I already did this budget in starting in March, I know long before the time that I might have a problem in June. So then the business must arrange with the bank for bank overdraft facilities, or they must arrange for a loan, 
or the owner will have to provide more capital to pay all the expenses and all the debts if the income is not enough.